If you're into e-commerce or dropshipping at all, I'm sure you've noticed all of the hype around Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok paid traffic. But as these become more and more popular and the hype surrounds them, it becomes more costly to advertise on these platforms. So what's the solution? You can either try to increase your product cost or you can try an alternative paid advertising platform. In this video, I'm gonna break down my personal Snapchat ad strategy when I wanna give Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram a break. It's a super simple strategy that you can apply in under 30 minutes and have it at a very, very low budget. You could run this at $5 a day per ad set, which is very low and very budget friendly. And I'm gonna walk you through all of it step-by-step step right now. All right, before we even go through this step-by-step -step process, I wanna show you some proof and look at one of the Snapchat ad campaigns that I ran using this strategy and see how profitable I was and also how low the cost per acquisition was. This campaign spent $641.34. So if you look at the daily budget, it's $50 per day in ad spend. Not exactly the $5 I was talking about, but I'll explain why, and this is actually a duplicate in a scale up from that original test, which I'll be explaining in this video. So this was running at $50 a day, $641 spent, CPMs of 1.04, which is very cheap, 13,000 swipe ups, an estimated cost per swipe up of five cents and 144 purchases total. So how much is 144 purchases if I spent $641 divided by 144, that gives me $4.45 cost per purchase, which is very, very low. So Snapchat does have a lot lower conversion rate, but if you can make it work and you can reach a large enough audience and get that really Really, really cheap cost per link click. And then if your landing page is really converting, you then can get a lot of conversions for very cheap. With that being said, this is the exact strategy that I use for this ad and I will show you step-by-step step right now. Make sure you're paying attention, make sure you're taking notes because this is very important, valuable information. Also, if you like these tutorials and these long form videos, if you think they're helpful, make sure to leave a like, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It really helps me out. So the first thing you're gonna do is hit create an ad. We're gonna create a new campaign. What we're gonna do here is go to advanced create. So if you don't have a Snapchat business account yet, you're obviously gonna have to make one, link your pixel, all that stuff. But we're just talking about the ads today. Select your objective. This is essentially where you want to pick the objective of your campaign. What do you want it to do? You want to spread awareness or do you want to you know, get sales on your store? This is very important. So you want to do conversions and then you want to go down to website conversions. You really don't want to pick anything else unless you're running you know, ads for like an app install or something like that. But if you're doing e-commerce and drop shipping, make sure you do website conversions you need that it targets the right people that are actually converting campaign name it doesn't matter uh, you can name this whatever you want um, so we're gonna go with campaign example one type it in there status is active if you want to run the ads right away leave that on active if not you can turn it off and you can just pause it for later if you want to keep editing it or whatever uh, create a split test is a new thing uh, that they have that you can like do an a b test on i'm not going to do it for this uh, this isn't the strategy that i've been using that's been working so we're going to leave that off for now start and end time this is when you can start the ad campaign obviously you can end it uh, at a certain time if you want or if you want to only spend a certain amount of money you can do that here but for the purpose of this i like to let it run as long as it possibly can run without me turning it off. The daily spend cap option is if you only want to spend $50 a day maximum at the campaign level, but I would leave this blank personally because we're going to be doing an ABO. It's, it's not going to really impact this campaign too much, so you can leave this blank. Lifetime spend, if you only want to spend $500 on the whole campaign over its lifetime, not just daily. I don't really know why you'd ever want to do these, to be honest with you. I guess if you're like an ad agency and someone's like, I have $500 to spend, like, don't go past it. Other than that, we're going to leave everything else blank here. So that was the campaign level set up. Now we're on the ad set level, and then below that is the create or ad creative level. There are three levels to every single campaign on every single paid platform, just so you guys know real quick. There's a campaign level, which I just showed you. There's the ad set level, which is mainly targeting and demographics. And then the ad creative level is where you put in your video creative or your image creative and you had like the text and the headlines and stuff like that, just so we're on the same page. So for the ad set details, we're gonna leave this, uh, you can name it whatever you want, right? So you wanna be descriptive, you maybe put the product, but we're gonna do example one. Snap pixel is already attached. If you don't have your pixel set up, make sure you do because it tracks all of the data, it helps collect it, it helps make better decisions for the algorithm. You definitely need that onto your website. Snap app ID tracking, we're gonna have that disabled. Budget and schedule, this is where you can put the budget that you want. So we're gonna do $5 budget per ad set. This is the example for this, right? So five bucks, daily budget, starts today, all set, good to go. All right, so under placements is where you can let Snapchat essentially decide where to place your ad. It could be on like the news feed, it could be on um, in between stories or whatever. It, it picks for you, it's all the other options. But if you click edit, you get to pick exactly where it shows. I always leave automatic. I let Snapchat decide that whatever's best, it gets the best deals. So we're gonna leave automatic placements on. So for your audience location, this is totally up to you. I personally like to use United States only. I know on my Facebook and Instagram, 
kind of strategies I like to do the top five, which is the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. But for Snapchat specifically, I really like to do United States only just because it's already a lower converting platform. Um, so I want it with the highest converting rate country. So I just like to leave the United States on there. All right, on to the next section of the demographics. This is for like the age restrictions and you get to choose what age, you know, we want to advertise to, um, what gender but this is totally dependent on your product. On Snapchat, they have such a young audience, so most of the audience is, is younger on Snapchat, so it's gonna be a lot cheaper to advertise to those people, and it's gonna hit the most people, essentially. I like, on Snapchat, I think like 16 is a pretty good age to target and above, depending on your product again, right? If it doesn't make sense to 16 year olds, you probably shouldn't be advertising on Snapchat. For my case, um, I sell in the beauty and cosmetics industry, so 16 up is pretty good. You can choose male or female. We're gonna choose female for mine. Uh, languages. Uh, uh, leave it blank if i'm only targeting the united states it's usually just going to be english advanced demographics is household income this is just if you want to target people that make more or less than x amount of dollars i like to leave my audiences wide open especially in 2023 which i talk about in all my strategies wide open broader audiences are performing way better let the algorithm decide so we don't need to narrow that down even more especially by alleged income predefined audiences this is for basically uh, detailed targeting detailed targeting on snapchat is not a bad thing i do a lot less detailed targeting on uh, facebook and instagram nowadays but for snapchat i do like to throw in like one or two so this is what i do i usually choose beauty mavens but what i do is leave expand audience automatically on so it kind of gives it a hint and it says like look in this beauty kind of area of the data that you've got from these people but if you can't find it and you, you, you can't find people that are converting in your audience then expand it even further so i would recommend putting one to three interests on Snapchat and then having the, the detailed expanded audience automatically on. I, that's always worked really well for me. This is the strategy that I use for Snapchat. All operating systems, all device makes and models and connections. It does not matter if they're on cell or Wi-Fi. Carriers does not matter at all. I'll leave those blank. Delivery status active. Now goal, this is gonna be kind of a hot take. So there's swipe up, pixel purchase, page view, right? So on Facebook and Instagram, you really wanna pick uh, purchase, right? Because that they're the best at targeting. But Snapchat, what I've found, this is just me personally, and the money that I've spent on Snapchat, swipe up works better than pixel purchase. I don't know why. The conversion rate is a lot lower, but the traffic is a lot cheaper. This is definitely for the niche that I'm in. It works out really well, but I would definitely A-B test this if you wanna do swipe up versus pixel purchase. One is supposed to be more converted than the other, which is pixel purchase, but I haven't found that to be true. So I like to do swipe up gets me a lot of traffic, low conversion rate, but cheap traffic, so it's worth it. But again, I recommend A-B testing both. So we filled out this entire ad set level, right? And the strategy that I like to use is actually building three ad sets, all the exact same targeting, right? So make sure everything is the exact same here and you can just duplicate. So I go up to the left here, duplicate the ad set, and we're gonna do it one more time. I like to do three fair tests of an ad set level with three different ad creatives in each of those ad sets. I know it's a little confusing, but I'll walk you through it. So each one now has the exact same targeting, the exact same age, and $5 of ad spend on each of them. So you're spending $15 total a day. You always wanna isolate one very lot of time, and the thing that you're testing here is the ad creative. We're not testing any of the audience sizes or the audience demographics, anything like that. I think that's kind of the best setup for the Snapchat's audiences, and Anyway. Plus you want to go more broad. So what we want to do here is test three different ad creatives and three different marketing angles. So we duplicate the ad set level three times. Now let's go into the ad creative level for the first one. All right, so this is the ad creative level where you upload your ad creative. Usually it's a video. So the name, no one's going to see this on the outside world. This is just to keep like track of it and you know, you want to name it correctly. Brand name, you're going to put your brand name here. It's going to pop up at the top left and the headline is going to say right below. It's going to say, try our new, new tool today. You can say whatever you want here, optimize your ad copy. Upload your media, it uploads on here. Make sure your video is nine by 16. It looks native to the platform. Call to action, I always do shop now. It makes the most sense. I think it converts the most. Website URL, this is where you're gonna put your landing page, okay? And then for delivery, we'll leave it as active. And that is it. So that's one ad creative that's completely done. I'm gonna repeat this again, but for this ad strategy, you need three different ad creatives to test, three different marketing angles. So this is where you upload marketing angle one. You can do the exact same thing for marketing angle two here. Plug in a different headline, possibly, depending on the marketing angle you really want it to match so make sure your ad copy is really good do the same thing for ad uh, creative number three and then once you finish that you're gonna go down to review and publish and you're gonna hit publish that's all you're gonna do for this ad strategy in the beginning this is gonna be for testing the products into scale I'll explain it in a second but it's gonna be a little bit different so right now we've got the campaign level that looks like this we've got three different ad sets all with the same targeting and then 
each of those have one different ad creative each, right? So we're giving it a fair test. Each one is gonna be allocated $5 per day. And I like to do that because I don't like to run a CBO right away where it mixes up all those, your $15 in ad spend and decides where to spend it. One can get eight, one can get two, one can get two and a half for three, whatever the remainder is. I don't like to do that. I think in the beginning, if you're testing ads, you should be testing them fairly with a full set budget for each one. So this one is five, five, five. After you set up these three ad campaigns and let them run, I would let them run for three to five days or three to five times the selling point of your product. So if your product is $5, you wanna spend at least $150 to $250 in ad spend to give it a fair test. Now after you let this Snapchat ad campaign run for the three to five days or three to five times your selling point, we're gonna open up the metrics, take a look at them and see which one is performing the best. Hopefully you've got some sales. But whatever one is the lowest CPMs, lowest cost per link click, but most importantly, the lowest cost per purchase. Once you decipher that and figure out which one of the three is the best marketing angle and the best ad creative, you're gonna turn off the other two. Once you turn off the other two to scale, you're gonna to wanna to duplicate this ad campaign and only have that winning ad creative running. Then you're gonna up the budget from $5, maybe you wanna up it up to $25, and you're gonna scale this way. After you duplicate that campaign and up the budget and it's still performing well, you're gonna do it again and duplicate it with more money into the next campaign. This is what I personally do on Snapchat. It's worked for me for many years. It's great for 2023 and you can start off with such a low budget at $5 also very simple very easy to follow along there's really nothing special to it besides testing the marketing angles and setting up your ad campaigns and ad sets correctly so this is the ad strategy that i'm going to be running with in 2023 for snapchat whenever i get sick of facebook instagram or tiktok it's given me great results so far i'm going to continue to do it and see if i can improve it more and more but follow this ad strategy if you're interested in snapchat and let me know in the comments down below if it's working out for you what kind of metrics you're getting from it and see if one of you guys can beat that four dollar and 45 cents cost per purchase all right i hope this video helped you you guys out make sure to leave a like hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below but as always thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time